what's your take on ego and, and how do you look at it and feel about it? Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I like for, I didn't even know, I'll tell you this. I didn't even know. I had no idea what an ego was Yeah. up until like I read, I think my first like Gabby Bernstein book and she really dove into it. And I was like, Whoa, that's, you know, that's amazing. I remember learning about it in psychology and high school and college, but I, it didn't click. No. Right. You know, there's like the ego and the id and well, I never that, clicked. And that's like the word, like the, the honoring, like that's what I mean. Like we hear these words in school and we're like, uh-huh. it doesn't, oh, we, we've heard about ego and we've heard about, you know, the self and these things through school many times, but until they click, yeah. then they've got the power. Yeah. So yeah. And- yeah, and so growing up too, you know, you also associate with like, oh, they've just got a big ego. They're yeah. full of themselves. They've got a big ego. And that's that's what I thought ego was. was yeah. Oh, someone that's just overly confident yeah. and in a little bit of like a eh kind of way, not, yeah. a, not a really like um, inspiring way. But I guess, because uh, I have to work with ego, oh my gosh, it's like a daily practice, right? Like we're always working with our ego, but we're also like when I'm coaching women, like that's such a big thing that I really want them to start to understand And what I found works best is, so ego, I mean, you can have so many names for it, but I like to, I like to honestly give a lot of names because different things are going to resonate with different people. So it's like ego can be synonymous with fear, can be synonymous with inner critic, right? Can be, can be synonymous with like, um, a lot of women say like inner mean girl or inner mean boy, whatever. Yeah. Negative Uh, self-talk, that sort of. Yeah. Negative self-talk another. Yeah. So like that's like these all can be synonymous. And so what resonates most with you is all that matters. But essentially what I tell people is like, okay, our ego is not a bad thing. We need it. We're human, right? We're here as humans. And so we have an ego and it's actually great because it helps us identify who we are and, and have this individual individualistic aspect of ourselves. But the thing is, the ego is designed to keep us where we're at and keep us very safe and keep us very um, the same, right, inside of our comfort zones. And so when we look at it that way and we're like, okay, so there's this ego, this part of our consciousness that wants to keep us safe in our comfort zones. And what happens is when we start to contemplate from our higher level of thinking, okay, I want to do this thing or I want to start this practice, or I want to like try on this way of speaking to myself that's outside of my comfort zone, that's unfamiliar, that's new, then our ego, then our fear, then our inner critic is going to start to jabber. Hmm. And it's going to start to say these things because our mind is so powerful. It's going to start to like say all this stuff to keep us from expanding outside of our comfort zone. And so what doesn't help is when you start to engage in that dialogue. And you start to like get mad at the ego and be like, oh, why can't I just not have an ego? I wish I didn't have an ego. I wish I didn't have doubts. I wish I was just confident, right? When you start to do that, it gives the ego strength and power. And then what happens is you just stay. And the ego's like, yay, victory. And you're like, oh, I wish I didn't have an ego. Yeah. But when you can start to be like, okay, this is an aspect of myself that's built in, designed to keep me where I'm at. And it kind of hums and drums and it doesn't really sound good. It sounds... It sounds kind of nasty. I don't really like the things it says. When you can give it a little bit of compassion and love, and but also sternness, simple as like, thank you, but no thank you. Yeah. And then move in the direction of like what feels good and what feels expansive. And know the ego might still buzz until whatever you move towards then becomes comfort zone. Yeah. Right? So for example, with meditation, really simple example is when you're beginning to meditate and you're noticing all these benefits in your life, your ego might be like, you know what? Let's skip it today. I'm tired. Or you know what? We can't handle 10 minutes. Like five minutes is good enough. I don't want to go to 10 or, you know, whatever it starts to say. Mm. And so you can either be like, okay, ego, I hear you. And you know what? It's actually safe for me to meditate for 10 minutes. And I'm going to choose to meditate for 10 minutes. Yeah. And then you go and you meditate for 10 minutes. And we do that again and again and again. And then all of a sudden, after like four weeks, a month, meditating for 10 minutes comes comfortable, your ego isn't going to pipe up when you meditate for 10 minutes. But maybe it will when you say, okay, now I'm going to meditate for 20 minutes, yeah. or now I'm going to meditate twice a day, Yeah. right? And so it's like kind of that aspect of us that's going to sit there and jabber, and jabber and jabber, and so we kind of have to speak to it, love it, acknowledge it, tell it, 
it's okay, I'm safe, because that's all it wants to know is I'm safe, and then move forward anyway and take that next step out, the comfort zone expands, it quiets down, and it's just like an endless ongoing process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. And yeah, it's spot on, it's a beast. I think the ego is really powerful, and I think mm-hmm. that's what, I sort of, what I've noticed. And I think there's a flip side too, Shannon, where you work with people too, it's like, oh, I've been offered this role as a general manager, for instance, and I'm this. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, so do you really want to take it? And it's like the ego is like, of course you want to take it. Like you want to be a GM, that's the next step. But mm-hmm. to bring the person back to go, okay, well, is that you or is that the ego wanting to that the status symbol or the extra $20,000? But in your heart of hearts and when you go back to your core values and honoring yourself, you know, is the six hours a week away from your children to be the GM really serving your purpose or is that Mm. the ego wanting just the next step because that's what society's telling you is successful and I think that's the the other flip side where it can really again it hooks you into Mm -hmm. into that and and what you're saying is so true and I love what you said and it's it's the like some people think they can just let the ego go and it's it's I don't believe the the ego is always going to be there Mm-hmm. And it's it's like it's how well we build a relationship to the ego is what's really going to matter, not not trying to get rid of the ego or pretend it doesn't exist. Because if you do that, that's when it's going to become even stronger and take more mm-hmm. of a hold on you. Yeah. So I I think you're spot on, and I I think people need to spend a lot of time building that relationship with the ego and noticing exactly what you said, which is amazing tool to actually go. Oh, that that's the ego. Like talk to it. And let mm-hmm. it know that, oh, okay, that's interesting that you're not wanting to meditate for 10 minutes today. And chances are when you do sit even to meditate for that 10 minutes, the ego will come back in a minute too and go, I told you you shouldn't be doing this. It's like, oh, <laughs> there, there you are. That's interesting that you, you, you're here. But I, I think I, should, I need to stick it out. Like mm-hmm. and you quiet it again, it'll come back. But yeah. it's such a powerful, and that's why I want to ask you, it's so powerful and, and it, do you feel that? Do you feel that it can cripple people? That it really sort of can hold them back. That, that, mm. that oh my gosh! Ego? Yeah, and I'll give you a perfect example. Like in my own life, it's in the last so personal example. I was like go and go and go and go and go and go and doing all these things, and had this experience last fall that just like things just blew up all at once, and it was really scary, and it was really ugly, and I didn't like it, and I was freaked out. I was just like so much anxiety, just so much mess, confusion. I didn't know who I was. Like it was it was a dark night of the soul, rock bottom experience that like I was not expecting. I was like on my high horse, like I'm doing this yeah. thing. I'm gonna travel the world blah, blah, blah. And then it was like, boom, no, Shannon, that's not where you're going. And so I've like really had to sit with myself a lot and lean on like really positive relationships and like cultivate a really strong relationship with my, um, my intuition and just like knowing, okay, what, what are the correct decisions? What aren't the correct decisions? And I've noticed now I'm kind of at this period where I can't go back into old patterns because I've got so much awareness around them. Yep but I cannot stay where I'm at because it's becoming painful, right? And so it's like, my ego is like, no, don't invest in that. You know, I'm looking for my next like spiritual mentor coach that I want to work with. And my ego's like, no, don't do that. Stay where you're at. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, but where I'm at is now becoming more painful than like investing this scary amount of money into a next coach because I know what might happen and what might happen is that I outgrow certain people certain relationships certain places in my life that are not serving me anymore and that is what's freaking my ego out it freaks it it freaks everyone (laughs) out I think that's and I think that's the bit like going back to your client about how she you know she's had to let it go and she's going to go to India and study yoga it's there's this and I don't I haven't seen it stop. It hasn't stopped with me and it sounds like it hasn't stopped with you where you become, the more aware you become, the more you realize I can't be where I am right now and it like it feels like it's the wrong spot. A bit like that movie, The Matrix, like you're, this isn't where I, it's all an illusion type stuff and it's very yeah. uncomfortable to be there. But 
then you're not where you feel like you should be yet. So you're sort of stuck in the middle and that yeah. space and then you get you transition to the next space and then you sort of realize oh i want to go again and you just get stuck again like which sounds a bit like yourself in terms of outgrowing and getting a new mentor and it's scary but it's mm-hmm. necessary at the same time like you sort of i can't not do it to a certain degree mm-hmm. yeah and i think you do like you have these these like periods of time and these you know moments when you're like you know what things are good you know, I'm feeling really good. I feel like I'm stretching myself. I feel good where, where, where I'm at. But then like, yeah, those plateaus hit. We're yeah. like, oh my gosh, something has to shift in a massive way. And I don't even know what that looks and feels like, but I know it has to because it's getting so uncomfortable to be here. Yeah. And, and what I, um, what I kind of alluded to is like, you know, we were all, everyone's talking about like, there, you know, higher vibrations, vibrate higher, this, that, and that. And I was kind of like a little bit eh about it because I was like, you know, that that's egotistical being like, oh, your vibration is higher than them and you can't spend time with them and this and that. But all of a sudden I'm getting a real time experience with it. And I tuned into a, like a deeper, um, accessing more like spirit guide meditation the other morning. And it, it, and the wisdom I got was like, Shannon, your soul is wanting to vibrate higher and the people you're surrounding yourself with and the, the, the environment you're in is old yeah. and it's lower. And so that's why you're so uncomfortable right now mm. because it's like it's out of your control that your soul's ready for the next evolution, but your your circumstance isn't reflecting that. And so it's like, that's why it's so uncomfortable. And I was like, okay, great. So what I said was I was like, you know what? That's great. That's amazing. There are certain aspects of my life I, I'm not going to change right now, right? Like where I'm living, I'm going to be here for a couple more months. Yeah. So what can I do in the meantime? Yeah. And you're, and you'll get insight. It was like, buy some plants. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, like there's little things that we can do, or it can be like, go out and do this women's circle or go to this meditation group or go to this yoga studio or do these little things right now to give you that dose of inspiration and give you that higher vibration or give you whatever it is your, your soul's looking for while you do the inner work to then get yourself to that next level where you're you're growing and you're more comfortable in your growth. It's not this like plateau uncomfortableness. Yeah, and I think Shannon, you've said you've like, but the plants, the plants and the the women's circle is the that is the step to trajectory. Like the trajectory isn't there when you move out of the house, for instance. It's mm-hmm. by that's the first step to getting the new plants, and it's going to that yeah. meditate. Like that's the the step to the higher vibration that's already happening but the the belief that i need to be in a different house is going to make the vibration all of a sudden that's the bit where it's acceptance of no i can start right now like it's inside mm-hmm. me and i can go and buy five plants, plants. yeah and mm-hmm. that's the yeah, start like that, that's it like i think that's the the beautiful bit with us that we can start where we are right now mm-hmm. and if we we i think you can get tormented on thinking you have to have this yoga mat to be better at yoga and then you start to compare when you walk into the studio of oh they've all got better yoga mats than me and I can't afford this yoga mat yet but it's like no I can use this one and I can just practice to stretch on it this way and that's my my way of getting where I want to be yeah totally and that that's the thing too it doesn't yeah it doesn't have to be this massive shift of like okay I'm gonna move it can be okay I'm gonna buy some plants and like that's what like that's what I was guided. That's what I was tuned into doing. And it's like, okay, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. And then what's next, right? And it's these little steps, right? Sometimes there are massive shifts you have to make. Yeah. But oftentimes, yeah, our egos will get in the way of like, oh, well, unless you can, yeah, get that yoga mat or live in that apartment, then you're not doing it, right? But it's working with where you're at, not staying stuck, but elevating it to the capacity which you can to give yourself momentum to keep growing. Yeah, and and chances are the massive shifts that we feel like they were massive shifts, if you actually reflected, and you might not realize it at the time, but there's probably been 20 small shifts that have made that shift really, it might seem like it's happened out of nowhere, but you've gone to a meditation class and you've met someone who owns a yoga studio in San Francisco that then all of a sudden, I'm moving to San Francisco, but the shift was you went to a meditation class and you Mm. met someone. And then, oh, hang on, it all happened all of a sudden no it's because you bought some plants 
and then yeah. you, then you, like that's where it started. Like it's the the plan started it really, and I think. That's